Many years ago, I moved from my elementary school to one of the best secondary schools in my country. What that means is that I was now studying with some of the very best students in the country. Really bright students. Of course, that got into my head. I knew that these guys are really bright. And what that meant is that my performance in class became really terrible. I mean, I was consistently among the last five in my class for that entire year. And then I was given a reality check by the person who was paying my tuition. He told me that if I didn't perform better, he was going to take me away from the school. Now that would have been really ruthless for me because my parents didn't have the money to pay my tuition. So I struck back to reality and told myself, hey, I actually think I'm quite bright. In all honesty, I think I'm actually brighter than a lot of these other students because they didn't come from terrible elementary schools like I did. They came from really good schools. I came from a worse school and I was able to qualify for this school. I told myself, I think I'm actually bright and I can perform better than these people. So I told myself that I'm going to perform better. And by the end of the next year, I was actually among the top five in my class and it remained that way until the very end. Now during that time, nothing changed besides the fact that my mindset changed from the fact that I'm studying with brilliant people to I'm actually brilliant, if not more brilliant than these people. That's all that changed my position in the class. This goes to show you that mindset shift is key very very important not only does it apply to school and academics but it applies to everything in life so in today's video i'm going to be sharing with you five mindset shifts you need to make for you to become rich so stick around right through to the very end first thing you need to believe that you can make money. You need to believe that it's possible for you to become a millionaire or a billionaire. You need to believe that you can become rich. You see, a lot of people imagine that the biggest percentage of wealthy people actually just inherited their wealth. That's completely not true. Did you know that 70% of all billionaires are self-made? And that even raises higher when you go to millionaires. Over 79% of all millionaires are self-made. Those are interesting statistics. That means that the biggest percentage of wealthy people actually do not inherit their wealth. What that means is that these guys have actually worked for their money. Yeah, Just like you, just like anyone else, they have worked for their money. They have put in their effort. They have built their wealth from a particular point. Building wealth and staying there requires some form of discipline. It's not just luck. Well, you can become wealthy by being lucky, but it's unlikely that you're going to stay wealthy by being lucky. And a lot of these people, for you to become a millionaire, for you to become a billionaire, you must be able to sustain wealth. What that means is that you you have to work for it. You need to work towards it. Did you know that there are more millionaires that have been made in the last 20 years than there had been in all the previous times in history? What that means is that it's even easier right now to make money than it was in the past. I mean, we have a connected world. The globe is connected. We have the internet. The internet has made it possible for people who are in you know, poor countries from any part of the world to actually make money. So it's very important for you to realize that there are no boundaries and borders as to who can actually make money. It's easy for you to think that you're probably disadvantaged because you're in a particular country. Did you know that a lot of people actually make money simply off the internet from their bed, yeah? Millions and millions of dollars from their bed without having to move and without having to do anything. They are simply in their home and they are making money. What that means is that anyone from any part of the world, regardless of religion, regardless of background, regardless of level of education, can become rich and make money. So you've got to believe it. So part of the foundations of you actually believing it, that you can make money, is that you've got to make affirmations, personal affirmations with yourself. You've got to tell yourself that you can be rich. What I personally believe is the best thing and what I did with myself is that I told myself consistently that I can be wealthy, that I am wealthy, that I'm going to make a lot of money until I actually believed it. At some point, I did believe it because I'm thinking to myself, I'm from a poor family, I'm from a poor background, I don't know a lot of people, I don't have connections. But if you keep telling it to yourself, then your eyes open up to the opportunities and the idea and the fact that you can become rich. And then it becomes real in your brain. And when it becomes real in your brain, it it drives your actions. The thing about believing that you can make it is that you open up your eyes to opportunities. Until you believe something, it's difficult for you to see opportunities. If you don't believe that you can actually be rich, if you don't believe that you can make money, if you don't believe that you have the ability to sit among the wealthiest people in the world, even when the opportunity comes, you'll push it away because to you, it doesn't seem real. It doesn't seem like something that's practical, something that you do deserve. But if you do believe that you deserve it, that you can do it, when opportunities present themselves, 
then they are bare before your eyes. You literally see them as opportunities that you should take up. The second mindset shit is focus on value and not money. If you're consistently focusing on how to get money, you're going to miss the point. You're going to miss what people actually need. The thing is, people pay for value. Think about the greatest inventors of all time. I mean, people who have brought things that have been life-changing. Look at Steve Jobs, for example, when he came up with a mouse. People paid for the mouse because it was valuable. It changed the way someone would interact with the computer. Completely flipped it around because of the way he implemented it. Look at the iPhone, for example, yeah? It's because of the value of the phone. I mean, by the time he came up with the phone, the idea, the reason why he came up with the phone is that he wanted a single device that you could utilize for everything. At that time, I mean, for you to play music, you needed a particular device, maybe the iPod. For you to use a calculator, you needed another device. If you wanted to take pictures, you needed the camera because other phones that had cameras had really crappy cameras. If you needed to make a phone call, then you needed a phone. He told himself, how about I put all these things in one device? It's value. Then you only need to walk around with a single phone that can do a lot of things. You'll do calculations, you'll search the internet, you'll play music, you'll do everything that you require simply from a device. It is the value that you get from it, yeah? Look at things like McDonald's, for example. You know the reason people keep consistently going to places like McDonald's, despite the fact that everyone taunts them as being unhealthy and everything? It's because of consistency and expected value. If someone goes there, they know exactly what they're going to be getting each and every time. You don't want to go to a place and every time you go there, your experience is changed. I mean, the first time you go there, you have a really nice experience. The next time you go, the experience is really crappy. You're like, well, I'll go the third time. This time it gets better. No, you want to go to a place where everything is consistent. The thing is that people hate change, and that's the truth. People hate change. And so if you can give them something that's consistently good, they're going to be sticking around and bringing their money to you. So you need to make sure that you provide people with value and not focus on money. The third thing is embrace failure. You need to understand that failures are actually not failures. I personally have had multiple failures in my businesses, things that people would consider failures, but I consider them to be stepping stones. Why? Because they are learning points. Every time a failure comes for you or in your path, it is something that won't work out that you've actually identified. I personally, for example, do run farms. And on my farms, I have a lot of turnover of staff sometimes. Why? Because I get workers or staff who come and they are really crappy. If you're crappy, I don't mind letting you go. Yeah? You go. If you want to leave, you go. I keep the very best around. I've had people steal from the farm. I mean, stealing from the farms. If you steal from the farm, I'm going to be set back, of course, because you're taking my money, you're taking a lot of my effort, but that's also a learning point for me, for me to discover another line in which people can actually steal, and I get an opportunity to fix it, probably before the business becomes too big, before it becomes a billion dollar business. So it's very important for you to understand that all these are learning points. Look at people like Jeff Bezos. You know, Jeff Bezos keeps talking about about Amazon, for example, and he tells his shareholders sometimes when a product fails, you know, I think a while back he had a product fail and you know he's accountable of course to his shareholders, but then he kept telling them that, hey, we actually need bigger product failures. You know why? Because with every product failure, there is other products that are actually succeeding. Usually if you're being innovative and producing a lot of things, the biggest percentage of them are going to fail, but then you're going to have a few of them actually work through and these are going to be the biggest elevators in your life. So you need to be able to take up more chances. The reason a lot of people actually don't make it to the top, the reason a lot of people don't succeed is because they don't take enough risks and so they fear failures. If you take risks, of course you're going to have a lot of failures but then your chances of success are also going to become high and usually when you succeed, successes are bigger than failures. So never ever fear failures. Look at someone like Thomas Edison for example. It is said that according to his records, he failed in making the electric bulb 2007 774 times. That's 2,774 times that he failed to make the bulb work. But that is 2,774 times that he figured out the bulb cannot work. You understand? So you could choose to look at it as a failure, but you could choose to look at it as another way I've discovered that does not work. So I shouldn't waste my time trying to use this method. Yeah. So understand that failures are actually not meant to be failures, but stepping stones that are meant to propel you to the very top. The fourth mindset shift is think big. I mean, you've got to think big. Don't have a limited vision. For you to think big, you've got to have a vision 
you've got to have goals. You must have a point of focus, something that you're looking towards. You don't only look at the nearer picture or the smaller picture or the everyday activities that you're carrying out in the business. No, you've got to look at the bigger picture. The bigger picture draws you towards a bigger form of focus. When you don't look at the bigger picture, it's easy to focus on things like revenue, you know, the current revenue you have, maybe the current stuff that you have. But if you look at the bigger picture, sometimes you're even more likely to make sacrifices currently for you to get the bigger picture. I mean, look at a country like BYD. BYD is a Chinese electric car making company that's actually taking over the world right now. Tesla had always been known to be the king and it's up there, but BYD is currently making loads and loads of sales. And at the current rate, it's going to be making way more sales and more profit than Tesla in the very near future. But for them to start out, they have been willing to make losses simply to get market share, you know, to get people talking about their product, to get everyone to know that, hey, a BYD car is actually a nice car. I mean, it, it could probably be better than a Tesla. Think about it that way, yeah? So these guys are willing to make short-term losses, but to look at the bigger picture and consider capturing the market as a whole. So you need to make sure that you're looking at the bigger picture. So set goals, set a vision, work towards it. I consistently tell people that a lot of times when you go through hard things and give up, it's because you're not looking at the bigger picture. If you are looking at the bigger picture, you would understand that all these things that are coming are actually a learning point that will ensure that when you get to your destination, you actually have perfected your game. So always think big and never think small. And then point number five is invest in yourself. You need to think and believe that investing in yourself is actually important. We are consistently getting better. The best thing that you can actually do for yourself is invest in your knowledge, invest in your health, invest in your ability to make money. You need to make sure that you obtain as many skills as possible. A lot of times, a lot of people just want free things. I mean, be willing to pay money. I personally have paid money for subscriptions, for trainings, for seminars in order to make myself better. I've paid money for mentors simply to sit down with someone, interact with them for a few minutes and to get the level of knowledge and the level of wisdom that they have and impart it into me. So you've got to invest in yourself. You need to understand that you actually don't know everything and that actually the biggest percentage of things you know actually doesn't work. That's the reason you're not a millionaire. There's a lot of people outside there who are making a lot of money and they have a lot to teach you. So be open. If someone someone knows more than you, if someone has more money than you and they have been working authentically in a truthful manner, most likely they have something to teach you and be open to learning from them. It doesn't matter the ethnicity, it doesn't matter the gender. A lot of people are not willing to learn because probably the person they could have learned from is a woman. They're like, I can't learn from a woman. That's really crappy. Yeah, really crappy. So be open to learning, invest in yourself, understand that you have to learn for you to get to the very top. And also previously I've made a video about 17 ways in which you can actually get rich without going to school. Very great video. I'll leave a link to that video right here. You can check it out. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, smash the notification bell. That way you never miss out on an upload. Catch you very soon with another video. Lots of love. Bye-bye.